Welcome to The Man from Macro, where we look at some of the big themes in today's global markets. This week, we'll be looking at gold's recent surge to an all-time high and the unusual backdrop to this price action. The gold price recently peaked at just over $2,400 on a closing basis, rallying 20% off this year's lows. Since November of last year, it had already made a stealthy series of new highs, but it wasn't until the beginning of March that it emphatically broke the previous triple top. From a technical perspective, it's not uncommon for a clean break of a major topping formation to be followed by a price surge. But this rally has also diverged from its long-running relationship with real yields. For most of the last 15 years, the gold price has had an inverse relationship with US Treasury 10-year real yields. Here we've used a market-based measure of inflation expectations rather than actual inflation data, such as the CPI. You probably recall that real yields are the actual yield minus inflation expectations. If actual yields are 5% and inflation expectations are 6%, real yields are minus 1%. Up until 2022, the gold price tended to rise when real yields fell and vice versa. Since 2022, the divergence from this pattern has been dramatic. This divergence has taken place since Russia's invasion of Ukraine. In fact, it was probably the re-weaponization of the US dollar due to sanctions on Russia. That kick-started the alligator jaws between gold and real yields. So which forces, therefore, have been in the driving seat of this gold rush? Well, Global central banks have been net buyers of gold since the end of the great financial crisis in 2009. Their buying accelerated in 2022 after the Russian invasion, though their activity doesn't explain the gold surge this year. And why have some central banks been buyers? For many, buying gold has been a hedge to the currency debasement that has been taking place for many years. Although gold has only just broken out against the US dollar, there are many other currencies in which the debasement effects are clearer. Gold in Turkish lira has been an almost one-way ticket higher for the last 16 years. This may be an extreme example, but it's not an isolated case by any means. Away from central banks, the rally has been largely met by indifference and apathy from general investors. Institutional investors appear to have been reducing their exposure to gold during the last few years of price consolidation. Tom McClellan has shown that the holdings of the three largest physical gold ETFs have been declining throughout this period, including through the recent gold spike. Western investors have not been behind the breakout in the gold price. Chinese traders, however, appear to have been involved, leading some to speculate that China might be preparing to devalue its currency. Of note is the tenfold increase in open interest for gold futures on the Shanghai Futures Exchange since this year's low in gold. On the surface, it looks like Chinese traders have provided some of the momentum behind the gold price. But on closer inspection, this is not so clear. The rise in open interest has lagged the breakout in the gold price. It looks like these futures traders were chasing the price higher rather than setting the price. Furthermore, as of the 25th of April, open interest had almost normalized, whilst the gold price had only consolidated by $100. So what does that mean for the gold price now? Well, it's normal for a price breakout to consolidate and even retest the previous highs. That would take gold back to 2100. But central banks have been steady accumulators, and they should remain buyers of dips. Their structural tailwinds aren't likely to change in the short term, unless we quickly transition into a currency crisis. And why might that turn central banks into sellers? The thinking is that if they were accumulating gold as a hedge to currency debasement, then they would probably turn sellers if there was a disorderly decline in their currency. That said, the Turkish central bank has been one of the biggest buyers of gold in recent years, even as weakness in the lira gained momentum. And a true currency crisis often starts slowly, before exploding into action. The Asia currency crisis took a few years to get going, before cascading lower in 1997. The Asia dollar index lost over 35% in the second half of that year. But the point is this. Gold has performed well, despite the lack of interest from US and European investors. 
Central bank buying has been a super tanker trend and the tailwinds remain. Whilst those tailwinds could accelerate into a currency crisis, that still appears to be some way off, even if the wheels are set in motion by a near-term China devaluation. And in the meantime, institutional investors may again take an interest in gold if it establishes a new range above $2,100. The bid could simply shift from one actor to another. That said, please remember, none of this is investment advice. These are just observations for educational purposes only and everyone should be aware of their own investment objectives and risk profiles. But thanks for watching.